x happen, has an alibi, and it is consistent to assume that x is not the beneficiary, then we have to conclude that x is not a suspect. Okay, so in the last two examples, what I did, and this is obviously critical thinking, and this obviously applies to stuff that people do every day, right? And this is, this is just a small way of sort of introducing the idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to help you develop and understand how to use um, this particular model because it's probably the one that's most relevant. Everything else gets a little too sort of esoteric. But this is practical sort of everyday modeling for um, uh, justification-based truth maintenance system. What we've done in this, however, is that this assumes that our supported belief is justified by information that we, that we already have. What we need to do is we need to be able to create a system and design a system for the following. What if it's the case, and I hope I do this next because it will just be perfect flow. Yeah, I do this next. Oh, so let's go to page 17, right? What if it's the case, now none of this really sort of makes sense, but I'll, I'll help you make sense of it. What if it's the case that I initially make the assumption that Abbott is the murder suspect, right? So I'll erase all of this now. What if it's the case that I make the initial assumption that Abbott is the murder suspect? So that's my initial supported belief. And I have reasons to believe that. However, as I continue on my investigation, I recognize that, holy crap, um, I didn't think there was an alibi, but there is an alibi. Um, the fact that there is an alibi, and it's, it's well, I'll talk about waiting in a second, the fact that it's an alibi and it's heavily weighted, there's a lot of support for that alibi, leads me to change the nature of my initial assumption. In the last two examples that I gave you, where Abbott was the murder suspect or Abbott was not the murder suspect, um, it was the system was in a sense closed. I don't want to get technical, but the idea is all, all the information that I needed was already built into the system, right? Abbott is the murder suspect. Why? Because there is no alibi, and he serves to become the beneficiary of the, uh, the inheritance. Um, not having an alibi goes in my out list. Becoming the beneficiary comes in my in list, okay? When Abbott is not the murder suspect, so that system is closed. No new information is coming in, so it's just a means of justifying my belief, right? Um, and I could go into JTP stuff, but I don't want to go into that. Um, when Abbott... Sorry, JTB meaning justified true belief, but I'm not going to get into that now. When, when we have the assumption, our initial supported belief, that Abbott is not the murder suspect, well, why wouldn't he be the murder suspect? Because he has an alibi. Having affirmation goes in my endless. He is not the beneficiary. Beneficiary not being the beneficiary goes in my outlist. That structure supports the default logic as explained technically. The point is, those systems are closed. What if I get new information? Let's say I say Abbott is the murder kill, the murder suspect, and I get new information to demonstrate that he's not. My system needs to be flexible enough to incorporate that information and change. And that's what I'm about to um, explain now: how this system transforms, right? How how uh, the flexibility of the system to change. So let me erase all of this. Now that you have an understanding of what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this. I need to really sort of collaborate with like some animation people uh, and it would be it would be really awesome to dynamically see the system slow like I would narrate it and then you would I would have all the I would have the um, dependency network the justification based truth maintenance uh, system dependency network um, animated real time sort of change and then I would explain how all the different pieces change because you know joining on the board is good but to see it dynamically change I think would be an amazing pedagogical device so you know just throwing that out there anybody who wants to run with the baton after I finish the non-monotonic logic series it's yours to take into the into the cyberspace all right so supported belief right we're going to say that um, we're going to talk about suspect Abbott <laughs> Put this one got the ink back in it. Suspect Abbott.
suspect Abbott in, meaning that this is our initial assumption. Our initial assumption is that we believe that sus, uh, Abbott is the suspect, right? This is our supported belief. Right? Okay. Then we recognize, we're basically drawing the, the same structure, uh, uh, dependency network that we drew before. Positive, negative. Beneficiary, this goes in my end list. And uh, alibi. And this goes in my out list. Okay. Um, my end list, my out list explain that. Beneficiary, alibi, I explain the structure. I'll let me put justification here. So here's what we have. Um, the next thing that we want to do is I want to add what's known as a premise justification, and I I highlight this new um, this new structure. Right? The new symbol is this. Just that by itself. This is called a premise justification, and basically all of, I think I explained it here. Um, um, a premise justification is something that we are information that we're just given, right? We haven't derived this information, it's just been told that it is the case that X, right? So, a fact without further justification, right? A fact that you have without further justification. It is the case that um, Abbott is the beneficiary, right? There's no need to justify that anymore for whatever reasons of the, the nature of the case. Um, we could conceivably, you know, uh, go to a lawyer and pull up the, pull up the, um, the will and look to see if Abbott's name was on the will, and then um, you know make sure that it's made out. The, you know that inheritance is going to go to Abbott to further weight or strengthen the fact that Abbott is a beneficiary. But let's just say it's just known. You talk to uh, your your detective. You go in there. You say, hey, you know, I, I saw that your dad died. Um, are you the beneficiary on the will? And Abbott, him or her, Abbott says, or someone tells you, you know, I am the beneficiary, or hey, Abbott is the beneficiary. That's all we have, right? And at this point, we don't need any more information. That's known as a premise justification, right? So we represent premise justification with this symbol, and basically all that's saying, we know how to how to read this, or hopefully we know how to read this. If I did my um, my, uh, and actually, I don't think I was clear. You can actually read this in default logic. If you remember how default logic is structured, then you should be able to read this, right? Um, to be technical, you could say, and this might be a little bit harder to see, you, have to, you would have to be able to see how this pertains to the default logic. It would be, um, if it is provable, right? If it is provable, if it is provable that X is the beneficiary, and it is consistent to assume that X has no alibi, then we must conclude that X is our suspect. So you can actually read this. Like this is not just symbols. This there's a there's a, a, a linguistic structure to this. Remember, we were talking about earlier the um, the syntax of the um, dependency network, right? Uh, justification based truth maintenance systems dependency network preserves the the uh, the language formal language of default logic, right? That's a little heavy. That's a little. That's quite a bit heavy. But hopefully that makes sense, right? Let me see how else I can say it. I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, remember that we can represent this in default language, and I showed you a couple minutes ago how to do that. So since we can represent this in default language, and we know that default language can be read, I spelled out how to read it. Then since it's interchangeable, you can similarly read this, right? If it's the case that X is the if it is provable that X is the beneficiary and it is consistent to assume that X has no alibi, then we must conclude that X is a suspect, right? Or you just substitute Abbott with X. Okay. The fact that he's a beneficiary is a premise justification. We're just going to make that assertion, period. No need to go and prove and demonstrate, in fact, that he is. We're just going to make that assertion. Okay. So this is the first, this is the first thing. What I want to do now is let's and this is important, right? And this is where they don't spell this out, even in the book that I have, which was really, really good. 
it's not clear at all. And I was looking for a way to explain this um, in many, many different texts, and, and then it popped into my head, um, this an, idea of animating it. It's at this point that I wish I could animate it, but I was like, yeah, that's how I can explain it, if I, can, if I could explain how to animate it. So you got to try and, it's 2D, and I can't, let me cork this so I don't lose my ink. It's 2D, and I can't animate it, but just imagine that since we can read this, and you and me are the detectives in the case, we believe that X is the suspect, right? We believe that Abbott is the suspect. And this is justified by the fact that Abbott does not have an alibi. There is no alibi. The question is, what if we now get new evidence? Remember, we said non-monotonic logic in critical thinking. We have to have a system that's flexible enough where new information supplants old information and that new information changes the structure of the system. In monotonic logic, the system would collapse. In non-monotonic logic, the system adapts. It's an adaptive structure. To be, to be technical, it's a, an adaptive network. The network adapts to changing information. Hence, artificial intelligence, right? It adapts, which is exactly, it's like precisely at this point where AI really comes into sort of the discourse. What if it's the case, I want to be clear, and I'm going to go slow. What if it's the case that we begin with the assumption that Abbott is a suspect, but we then find out that Abbott actually has a really good alibi. Abbott has an alibi. We need to change the system. So how would the system, the question is, how would the system change upon the discovery from evidence that Abbott actually has an alibi? Here's what would happen. Hopefully that makes sense. And here's how we transform this system. Actually, I want to change it. I want to change a new color. Let me use red so that you can really see it. Actually, red's a bad color. Let's use green. Okay. So here's what happens. Um, follow me, right? I go out, I'm a detective, right? And I, I, I want to find out if Abbott really has an alibi. How do I go out and assess the validity of Abbott's alibi? My uh, time is about to run out. I'm going to pause the video at this point, switch out my batteries, come back and talk about how Abbott, um, how we change the nature of the system.